Not our official sponsor, Greenwood Stock Trading. If you want to learn how to make some passive income, some extra money, so you can invest in your future and your kids' future, give them a call for a free 10 minute consultation 281 760 3170. Go get to the bag. All right, Errol Spence responds to a fan on Twitter saying, Straight me, uh, do complaints about his inactivity. Um, let's talk about it. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notification, increase your chance, and get notifications. We go live or drop video. And it's like, I want to go deeper than him. Uh, it's not really about him per se, but uh, I want to go deeper. So, you know, this dude says, uh, two fights, three years, and seven months. Vacate the belts if you ain't fighting. He says, strip me. Uh, so, and I'm pretty sure that was a sarcastic strip me. Uh, fans tired of inactivity. Inactivity only hurts the brand. It doesn't progress the brand. Um, and that's, and that's the honest truth, you know, um, and what's even more the honest truth, uh, is the sanction bell bodies are in bed with the manager and promoters. They pose to be a third party. And that's why the majority of them are, uh, sanctioned outside of the United States, an exception to the IBF. And they've been sued too for, I think selling ranking in spots and all of this is politics is politics man because if you had a, a a party that had no relationship to these promoters this dude would have been stripped by now you know and people like him would have been stripped right now so my thing is Fans got to continue to complain and put some pressure on these sanctioned and bell bodies to do the right thing. And obviously, if you're the fans, you know, if you're the if you're the uh, fighters, you know, you ain't you ain't you ain't getting helped in this situation. So he gets to hold up a whole division because. He waiting to make a fight that should have been made several years ago. He waiting to make a fight that a lot of fans say is stale. Now opinions will change once the fight, if the fight ever gets made. That is true. And a lot of people think on his behalf, it's his fault. Real talk. A lot of people from the beginning didn't think it was his fault. Some people learned pretty quick that it was his fault. And, you know, some people continue to, you know, blame who they want to blame. But um, car accidents, eye injuries, some are in and out of his control, He's dragging his feet. And the sanction bell body should have came in and the fighters should have bonded together and did a, a, a lawsuit. And that's what it should have been. Because it just don't make it don't make no sense. I mean, stallone has got a raw deal. Crawford getting a raw deal. Jerron Ennis getting a raw deal. And we, we wait. No, even people say we wait on him. He had a chance. He should be ordered to fight the next best guy up. But he won't be. Um, as long as them backdoor checks keep coming to these sanctioned the bell bodies, they're going to be perfectly happy. And that's what's going on. Backdoor checks. Backdoor information that the fans don't have. And at the end of the day, that's just letting you know, I got money behind him. Me, I got the power, most powerful man out him behind me. Do something about it. And ain't nothing y'all can do. And, you know, boxing is going to continue to backhand their fans until there ain't none, no fans no more. However, you want, however they want to call it and see it, it's dwindling. Because if they had a larger fan base, it would be more brand deals that would be associated with boxing. No matter how brutal it is, these dudes would be, would be all over the world. It's an international sport. These dudes ain't even got brand deals in their own countries, in their own states, in their own cities. 
You see the you know 53rd player on the fucking Dallas Cowboys in a car dealership commercial. These dudes don't have that. So in the grand scheme of things, as A lister, B lister, C lister, man, dudes, these dudes are Z listers. They're literally YouTubers more famous than they are. Let's be real. Literally. And I had two fights in three years and seven months and be a unified champion. It'll be a year to tomorrow, I believe they say, since he fought last. You got some people who don't see a problem in that. They said, well, you know, he's saving his health and, and he's healthier now than ever. Like, that, that don't save your health. You not doing something don't make you more healthier. That's like old people not walking. And then, you know, they want to get up one day and walk, and now their ability to walk has been hindered. You got to keep fighting. I keep telling people that. The more they, fight, the more consistent they fight within the calendar year, the less sparring they got to do. Where do most injuries happen? In sparring. Think about it. You cutting weight. You working out multiple times a day. You doing 40, 50, 60 rounds, whatever, you know, in a week or three weeks, whatever, two weeks per week, you're doing 40, 50 rounds. On fight night, it's 12 rounds. So if I turn around and I fight in January and I come back in April, I ain't got to do all that sparring. I'm still sharp from January in the camp I had leading up to January. April, I come back in August, whatever, I'm still sharp. If I want to squeeze another one in, come in November, December, I'm still sharp. And I didn't probably eliminate about 30%, at least a quarter of the sparring I have to do where more of the injuries are happening. Why I'm cutting weight, why I'm cutting cars, why I'm cutting water. Oh, this is my second workout of the day. This is my third sparring partner interchanging in there. But some people's minds can't fathom it. A lot of these dudes going should have been on their career should have been a lot better. Their skill set should have been a lot better if they would have fought. You, you think about how many guys truly stand in the gym when ain't nothing on deck. Through a whole year, how many of them dudes really stay in the gym and stand sharp as a razor? Not too many. Too many distractions. You got a little bit of money. got kids. You got a woman. You know, you got a family. You got cookouts. You got you traveling. And a lot of these dudes going to leave their wonder years to what ifs. That's what it's going to be. They wonder years are going to be what ifs. It ain't even going to be they wonder years. It was never had, never, never had been they wonder years. You never going to see the Charlos peak. You never going to know how good Terrence Crawford should have peaked. You never going to know how, Errol, how great Errol Spence could have been. They are the beta of this new brand of boxing. I mean, didn't Mayweather fight like 17 fucking times in one year or something like that? You know what I'm saying? They're going to be right up there, all these dudes in this era, maybe outside of Canelo Alvarez, who've been fairly active. They're going to be they gonna be one of these dudes, bro. They're going to be like Muhammad Ali. They're going to be like Muhammad Ali. And what I mean by that is nobody knew how great Muhammad Ali was going to be. If they didn't take his prime away from him for not wanting to go to Vietnam. It's the truth. You're not going to know how good these dudes could have been had they had a consistent schedule and stayed in the gym. These prospects ain't even fighting enough to be as good as they are. Look at Cobra. Now, this dude fought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He fought ten times in 1997. I oversold it. But he fought ten times in 1997, in his second, his second, his second uh, year as a professional, he's fought ten times. So outside of 97, ten of Mayweather's 50 fights came in 97. So if he if he was on on pace, I don't know. Let's look what he did in 98. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So he fought seven times in 98. 
So 17 of his fights, you know, came between 97 and 98. You take, you know, you take 98 away, dude, he only got 40 fights. You said that's a regular year, three fights. Come on. So you got to understand, man, that's how you hone your skills. That's how you get better. And, you know, when, when you when you hit an age, you hit an age. Like in your punch, punch counter, your, 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 your body break it down is your body break it down. It's a mileage meter. I get that. You know what I'm saying? You can say, well, he only fight once a year. His mileage meter is going to take longer to get to that neurological uh, body punch count or head punch count. Or, you know, he, you know, he's going to take longer to get to the mileages. But the thing about it is this. When you're not taking care of your body in between fights, you're not staying in shape, you're not sparring and doing everything you need to be doing leading up to the fight, it don't, it don't matter no more. Your diamond is still spinning because guess what? Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every January, February, March, every month, every week, every quarter they go by, you still fucking 30 years old. You still 28 years old. You still 32 years old. Adon Stevens turned pro at 29. When he hit 47 or his late 30s, whatever it was, that was it. So guess what? Even though you think you slowing down the process of abuse, okay, but you your body is still getting older. Your body is still getting older. It doesn't matter. Your, your odometer is still running. And that's not to say all the weight you got to cut in between fights. That's not saying if you're abusing your body outside the ring. And even if you are staying in great shape in between fights, but guess what? You're still leaving those wonder years in the ring. Because you're still getting older. You can't turn the hands and clock back no matter when you, how late you start, how early you start. It is what it is. When your body 30, your body 35, your body 40, 25, it is what it is. You never going to know about 95% of these fighters, you're never going to know how good they were. Because it is inactivity. Inactivity hurts their ability to, to get the reps to get better. It hurts their visibility. To grow their brand. And on top of that, you know, that visibility hurt their pockets to commercially, you know, monetize that. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We go live. Drop video. Partners, we will support the channel. Cash up, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash up, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Shout out to Ranji um, in the uh, Cash app. I do appreciate it, brother. Peace.